let's uh, take a quick look at the agenda we're going to be working with today. <clears throat> I will be doing a, pre a brief PowerPoint, and uh, I will keep it brief because I, I much rather be doing the, the live demonstration. But in it, we're going to talk a little bit about the DocuWare forms, uh, what its purpose is, what it's capable of doing, uh, and we'll review a couple of case studies. Uh, at that point, I will go in and do a, a live demo, which be the, which will be the majority of today's presentation. Uh, I'll show you a couple of different types of forms that are currently in use today. Uh, and then at the end, we'll open it up for questions and answers, uh, or at least open it up for your questions, and I'll do what I can to answer them. And if not, uh, we will certainly get back to you. So what is a DocuWare form? So DocuWare forms uh, are a feature within the DocuWare suite of products that uh, is a web-based form that gives you control over what information you capture. And once that information is captured uh, from a web form, it then determines how the information is to be used. Uh, what that means is that it provides you with the means to give, a, give web access to a user or a customer or a prospect uh, where they can fill out information on a form, whether it be uh, information regarding uh, their just name and address, uh, whatever information you need to gather uh, in order to do your job. And then that document and that information would be stored within uh, the DocuWare file cabinet system. DocuWare form is very easy to create and very easy to use. It, it is a drag and drop environment. Look at the, if you look on the left side of the screen, the designer client uh, shows the various types of field elements on the left side in a menu that can be dragged and dropped onto a, a palette in order to create the form that gets exposed to the public. And if you look at the sample on the right, uh, that is how that document or that web form would be presented to a user through a web browser. So it's very what you see is what you get kind of a, kind of a programming. Now, when it comes to solving many of the information challenges that you might have, uh, there, there are four basic uh, elements involved. The first one is replacing paper and PDF forms. Uh, DocuWare forms can very easily be used to eliminate email documents, uh, eliminate the need for scanning documents, and then ultimately storing paper documents, whether it's in boxes or file cabinets uh, across, uh, across the room. The uh, structured information uh, can, can be uh, maintained right up front, uh, eliminating blank fields by making areas required, uh, progressively reveal fields. We'll see a sample of that in the demonstration where by selecting one item, other, select, other options would be revealed on the document. Um, <clears throat> it also uh, has the ability to enforce formats. And we'll see a sample of that as well. So uh, in my example, we'll see that uh, we only have a specific way we accept zip codes using zip plus four. And we can force that, uh, that data element to be in that format before we will accept it. Uh, the next step would be launching digital workflow. So like any other DocuWare form, when a doc, like, I'm sorry, like any other DocuWare document, a DocuWare form once introduced into the system uh, can be interrogated by the workflow process so that by looking at specific index values on the document we can launch into these processes that will carry a document through uh, through its processing until ultimately it, it has uh, it has completed the process uh, and as always access for mobile devices you can access these uh, documents as well as DocuWare forms anytime, anywhere, uh, on any type of device. To simplify the information capture, DocuWare uses that once that, that I showed you earlier, the design tool uh, to design and publish without the need to do any coding uh, using the drag and drop kind of plug and play environment. Uh, those documents are then linked to workflows to eliminate any kind of manual processing of a document and then ultimately accessed from the DocuWare cloud. <clears throat> An example uh, that's in use today is an insurance company that is using DocuWare forms to uh, replace paper applications uh, with a mobile-friendly web form that has within it conditional logic 
that only shows the questions relevant to that particular uh, broker and type of coverage. So again, based on the selections made on the form, the next selections are revealed based on that behavior. Also, uh, a major airline uses uh, DocuWare forms to capture pilot applications. So using a single form, it has the ability to accept attachments so that these pilots can upload their training and certification documents, and all of the documents are put together and then routed through a review and interview scheduling process using DocuWare workflows. And then lastly, right here at DocuWare, we use our own products, obviously. Uh, in one case, we use DocuWare forms to capture the purchase order requests uh, and use them to initiate invoice payments uh, downstream. So now we get on to my favorite part, the, the demonstration end of it. So I'm gonna begin the demonstration by uh, showing you a couple of different sample documents, and then we'll go and create a document that kind of mimics that, uh, that behavior. Um, if you're not familiar with it, this is the DocuWare user interface. And I have it started at this point. I'd like to show that uh, I'm looking for documents stored today. So really there's no documents that should be in here right now. This should come up as an empty search uh, because nothing has yet been stored today. Okay, and it is. So we're gonna start off by looking at two different forms. The first one is an example of an, a new employee enrollment uh, document where uh, Joe Candidate has now been uh, accepted uh, or for a position uh, at a company and he sent this online web form for him to fill out common information that would be utilized in many of the onboarding forms that will be required when he when he starts his first day at work. So instead of coming in and filling out uh, three or four or ten different forms and populating his first name, last name, address, social security number, you know, 10, 12 times, we will already have these documents filled out for him based on the information provided here. So I filled out most of it already, but I did want to point out the social security number. Uh, as I said, we have the ability to force format. So if I were to enter more than three digits in this first value, I get a pop-up menu, that the pop-up item that says this value can be at most three positions. So I can enforce the process to only be, oops, I can enforce the process to only be the amount of, uh, in the format that I am willing to accept. I can even, in this case, I'll just lay a quick signature on here, such as it is, and submit the document. This document will now, <clears throat> take the information that has been provided on this web form and it's going to create and populate or merge that information with PDF documents. In this case, I just refresh my view and I see three forms are now stored within the employee files file cabinet. If I look at this first one, this I-9 form, When the document renders, we'll see that it's been populated with all of the information from my web form. First name, last name, address, social security number, uh, and the fact that US citizen. The W-4 form is the same thing. It's merged the information onto a PDF document that represents the W-4 and it has been mapped to put the information in the correct place. The other document I wanted to show you quickly is something we call a provisioning document. So once, <clears throat> once this new employee is getting ready to start, his new manager, Elizabeth Cash in this case, is submitting a provisioning checklist so that there can be, uh, his environment could be set up as soon as he comes in so he can be very productive very quickly on his first day. So as a provisioning checklist, I can select what department heads need to take some action, uh, whether it's finance or sales or HR, I'm gonna say HR needs to do something. So by checking the HR box, the document modifies itself and re based on the behavior, reveals more information. And it, it's not limited to that one level. If within the HR or human resources section, I needed more than the standard options for this particular employee. I could select the standard options plus 
and then go on to check off the boxes I need for this particular employee, business cards, company vehicle, time and attendance system. So that once I submit this document, this form will now become part of a workflow. And you'll also notice that this particular form, I have the ability to use a button to initiate a new blank form if, if it's something that I would be using uh, on a regular basis. But if I refresh my list again here, I now have my provisioning request document has been stored, but also there's a task that's been assigned. And if I were to look at this task, I see that I've initiated to Simon Stone. Now, Simon Stone happens to be the human resources administrator. So because of a lookup, because I checked manager HR, uh, it does a lookup to see who has that role and assigns the task for him to set up or complete the setup for this particular employee. And once that's done, he comes back here and clicks confirm to confirm that the operation or the setup has been complete. And then an email would go back to, uh, or a task would end an email would go back to Elizabeth Cash to identify to her that the setup has been completed. And there's also a stamp that gets put onto the document uh, in order to create a little audit trail so we know what's, what's happened with it. So that's two very different examples. This happens to be a web form, the provisioning checklist. So when the form gets launched and the, and the customer or the, uh, the user fills it out and submits it, that's actually what gets stored. The other one, the uh, first form that we filled out was actually something called a merge form. And what that does is take the information from the web form that was entered and merges it onto other documents which then subsequently gets stored to the file cabinet. So we'll be doing uh, a sample now, creating from scratch uh, a, a web form that we will then convert into a merge form. Now to do that, I launch from the DocuWare user interface, go into the configurations screen, and then from there I select the forms icon. So within the DocuWare form section, I've got several different documents already created. <clears throat> um, let's start with the blanket new form and we'll get an idea for what that experience is like. So when you create a new form, like most new things, you need to give it a name. So we're just gonna call this basic employee information. Uh, we're gonna take take on the, the application now where within the human resources area, we wanna create a, a record or a card that has basic contact information for, uh, for an employee. So when a document opens new and this palette is presented, a title uh, element is automatically added to it. So we'll just help out this description alone. We'll say employee information. Uh, maybe we'll align it to the center to make it look a little more professional. We'll put a subtitle in here. Maybe this will be the company name, right? Peter's Engineering. So we have a little bit of an idea of now, already it's starting to look like a form. Now, in order to continue creating the, docu the, the document itself, the field elements and the fixed elements are then dragged and dropped onto the palette in order to create the form. So we'll start off with some simple things like a single line text, dragged and dropped. And all we need to do at this point is modify the field label to say, first name. If there were instructions for the user, it would appear underneath uh, the, the data element, but there's really no instructions necessary for first name. Uh, we do want to make it a required field though, because we want to be sure that that's always entered every time. Now I can drag another single line text element and put it next to it. I can use the duplicate button and then just drag the new box here and call this one 
last name, and then continue on. Rather than seeing me do the same thing six or seven times, I'm going to cancel out of this and open a document that I've already kicked off. I've got a lot of basic information already in there. So we see the same document, basically. It's a it's required first name, last name, maiden name. Uh, maiden name is not required. Street address, apartment number, city, mobile phone number. So a couple of things are missing, though, specifically the state and the zip code. That's because I'm not going to be using just a single line text box for that. What I'm going to do is select a drop down list and apply that to the document. And this drop down list is going to be for the state. Now, I said earlier there's ways we can force specific uh, patterns or specific data formats in, and this is the first way we can do it. Rather than using a user provided list, as is selected here, I'm going to choose a select list. Now, a select list has already been defined in the back end at the DocuWare server level. So all I need to do is select the appropriate select list. In this case, I'm using the two letter states. And now whenever this document renders, this box will be, this drop down will be populated with the valid selections of the two letter states in that select list. And the last thing I'm going to put on here is <clears throat> the zip code, because that isn't there yet. So we can make this a single line text, change the field label to zip code. But this time, I'm going to utilize a field mask. And again, on the back end at the DocuWare system, we have a format defined called US zip plus four. So by forcing that format, anytime this document is rendered and someone enters the data into this field, it must be in the 1234-1234 format. Okay. So at this point, I have the basis of my form. So I'm going to move on down the line a little bit. This is where I would make this, the selection as to whether it's a web form or a merge form. So initially, we're going to create a web form from this. We can identify the message that gets sent to the user when the document is submitted successfully. This is where I would select a new new form start button uh, if I wanted to re-enter the same form over and over again. So there's a couple of different selections I can make for the submission. For the output, this is where we determine where the document's going to go. In this case, I'm using the default store dialog from the employee files file cabinet. And what's revealed to me here are all of the store dialogs for the various file cabinets in my system. The indexing is where I identify what metadata values will be populated from this form. Now, some of them aren't from the form, like the document type. I'm using a fixed value for that, and I call it basic information. That's the name of the document as it's going to be stored. Uh, there are certain values like first name, last name, street address, city uh, that have already been uh, identified. In this case, I want to add the state and the zip. And that's how easy it is to map a web form field to the field in the store dialog. So if I continue on. I identify the permissions associated with this document. Uh, I am, as the HR admin, I can not only administer the form, but I also use the form. If this was going to be exposed to the public, people who don't have DocuWare user licenses, I could configure what user ID and what password is associated with the submission of this document. So I would do that here for a public document. But since this is not a public document, I'm just going to go ahead and finish this and then launch it to get an idea of what it looks like. Okay, so here's my form. This is a web form. I can fill out first name, last name, maiden name is not required, street address, all, all well and good. But there's a couple of things that I want to add to this because I probably should add things like the uh, 
uh, gender, uh, marital status for some basic information. So let's go back to our form. And we'll add a couple of more fields. Specifically, we're looking for, I'll use, I guess, a, a drop down. And this is what we'll use for gender. Now, I'm going to use the user provided area for this, and we're really only going to use two options, right? For gender, we're going to have male, and we're going to have female. I'll eliminate the third option, and I'll explain behavior in a couple of minutes. Uh, instead of a drop down for marital status, let's use a checkbox. And the two options here are going to be married and single. And maybe we'll add one more line here. We'll call it email address. Now all of these all of these fields on the document are resizable. So I can make the email address longer because some people have long email addresses. <clears throat> um, if I were to maybe put the phone number down here, so and all of these elements can be moved around. Um, so we're going to go ahead now and see what this document looks like. Let's do this. We actually have the option also to preview, either in desktop or mobile. I'll use the preview this time to see what the document looks like. And it looks good. I like it. But the, the, the problem I'm having now is maiden name might not be something I want to show up all the time. It's, I mean, it's not necessarily for male or single people. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to associate field behaviors so that when uh, this document is being filled out, then only certain things will happen at certain times. This is very similar to what we did in the provisioning document by checking the HR manager it populated down the area for HR to do. So in order to do that, we select the field that we want to affect a behavior on. And we can either utilize the Add New or Field Behaviors button, Add New. And what we'll do is we'll create something called Maiden Name. And this is very simple logic is going to say, if the gender equals female and the marital status equals married, then we're going to make this a required field. Otherwise, it's going to be hidden. So now when I save this, I can select the maiden name field, add the maiden name behavior to it, and we'll see what happens next. So I'll launch the, the form in the browser again. So you'll notice there's no maiden name here now. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll say Roberta Jones. And let's just make up an address. Remember, this has to be zip plus four, right? And now it accepts it. Gender is going to be female, marital status married, and here comes maiden name. So now it's required and I need to enter it. Email address, phone numbers are not required, so I can go ahead and now just submit this document. Oh, I didn't pull down the stake, did I? 
So we won't forget that next time. I'll go ahead and make the state a required field. Now, I don't know if you noticed when the uh, document first rendered state and zip code and marital status all top justified until maiden name was brought up by its behavior, at which point it relocated. There's a way to prevent that from happening. And to do that, I utilize one of these fixed elements, something called a spacer. And if I take the spacer out here and put it between that first row and the second row, it'll act as kind of like a blocker so that nothing will justify up into the blank space of maiden name uh, until such time as it, it appears like it did the first time. Uh, and those spaces can be used. I know that a lot, a lot of times different, uh, different elements have different sizes. Uh, if they don't line up correctly, then it's very easy to just use a spacer to keep uh, all the elements in line. So this document now, if I were to go ahead and launch it again, First thing we notice is this space is now open. So again, I won't practice my typing in front of everybody. Now state is a requirement. So I can either use the drop down to populate the list of two letter states, or I could just type the first letter and shorten that list, make it easier to select the zip code, zip plus four. and female married here comes maiden name now the document's been submitted so in those situations now where i've gone in and entered these documents and stored them into the system and here they are the first one and then the second one that I just put in. These are examples of web forms. So the document or the, the format and the form that you saw on the screen, the HTML screen, when you stored the document, that's exactly what went into uh, the DocuWare file cabinet. So let's take a look now and see what, uh, what goes into creating the merge form, like we saw with the W4 emergency contact and I9, where the information was taken from that first screen and then uh, and then populated into uh, into a PDF document. So to do that, I need to change my submission. So from this point, I'm going to go ahead and say, I want to change this to a merge form. And a couple of other tabs appear up here now. I'll change this to say merge form submitted so we see the difference. This is where we identify the merge form that we want to use. I'll just remove this one. Oops, can't do that at this point. So we'll go ahead and edit the document and say we want to use the basic employee card. That moves us directly into the merge form designer. So I'm going to delete these pre-made mappings because it remembered from the last time that I did this. And I'll show you how we go ahead and map the fields to the area of the document. So all of the web form fields that we created in the designer step are listed now here. So all I need to do is using this draw box function, select the element and draw a box where I want that information to reside on this form. So I'll do this for each of the, the fields, which as you can see goes fairly smoothly.
home phone. Now for the individual statuses of gender and marital status, I can drop that down, select male, and where I want the X to appear. Oops, I did that wrong, didn't I? This is male. Okay, and female. And the same thing for marital status, married, and single. So now I've got all these fields mapped. Now, you may have noticed I was a little haphazard with the way I drew these boxes. That's because I, I understand that you don't want the data to overlay each other, so you'd really want these things to line up. So we make it simple to do that as well by using the multi-select, simple Windows multi-select by selecting the first box and then control key and selecting other boxes, you can right click and align the fields to the right. And they'll all line up with the first box you selected. I'll show that again here. First box, right, oops, right. First box, right click, align areas, right. And we can do the same thing if we wanted to change, make boxes the same size. If I selected, let's say, this entire row, selecting last name first, right click, make same size height. And the boxes automatically will match the first box I selected. So I could go across and do that same process or resize boxes individually. Whatever I need to do to make this, uh, this mapping uh, look correct. The same merge form output. I'm using the default store dialog for employee files. I should also point out at this point, the PDF properties are available to me. So I've had, I've had questions on other webinars regarding uh, can the PDF document be edited or fillable when once it's stored? So the answer is it depends on what you specify here. If you say no, it's a flattened PDF document, then it doesn't become a fillable PDF. If you say yes, then it stays, it remains a fillable PDF. And you could go, once the document is stored, extract it from the file cabinet, edit it, and then put it back in. Um, but any edits you make to that document will not change the metadata. The metadata still has to be changed uh, separately. The merge form indexing is all, uh, all remains the same. Permissions will remain the same as well. So we'll just finish and get an idea for what this is gonna look like now. Okay, so. New York. Female. One, two, three, four, five, dash zero, zero, zero. Zero. Married and Jones. I think that's all we really have to put in here. Again, email address uh, rj at aol.com. And I could have also used a, uh, a format to force specific uh, phone number formats as well. And submit. Now, if we go back into the user interface and refresh our list of documents, here's the newest basic information document. But instead of being a web form, this one now has the document format, the PDF document that uh, I used as the merge document. 
So that's where I was going to end today's demonstration. I think at this 